my name is Shishil Gupta. I'm the founder and CEO of Startup Means. This is a ask me anything session for angel investors. So you can ask any question related to angel investing. Whatever comes to your mind, you're most welcome. And uh, I'll be happy to answer all your queries related to Startup Means angel investment platform as well. Uh, if you want to understand the process or how this thing works, how to get the exit. First of all, I would like to thank you for providing such opportunity to uh, uh, means provide our funds as an angel investor. And uh, I, I am a new investor. I have invested in uh, three of the startups. I have some queries as uh, I don't have the exact idea regarding exit. So uh, suppose uh, we have invested and now the startup has gained some uh, valuation, which is probably two times, three times. So during the exit, how it works, uh, I would like to understand that process. So why this question comes to my mind is, suppose during the next round, the founder of that company has something in mind. Suppose they are raising uh -huh. another 10 CR or 12 CR. So they, they are diluting some uh, percentage from that. But at the same time, if somebody wants to exit, uh, then how do they calculate that and how that works? So if you kindly provide me some guidance. Okay. So let us take an example of a angel investment first round. Say the company is valued at 10 crores and they are raising 10% uh, dilution uh, and let's say 1 crore. Okay, so for one crore, they will be diluting 10%. Total company valuation comes out to be 10 crores. And now let us suppose you bought 1% of the company by investing 10 lakhs, right? So I'm just trying to make it simple. So you invested 10 lakhs at a 10 crore valuation and you got 1% of equity. Now, pre money and post money valuations are different. So before they, are, they were raising, they were valued at 10 crores after the fundraise is completed. It will be 10% appreciation automatically in the entire valuation of the company because of one crore which is added, it will be added to the valuation of the company. <laughs> so now pre-money valuation was 10 crores, post-money valuation will be 11 crores. So automatically just by investing, you gain 10% appreciation on your equity of 1%. So you invested 10 lakhs, it became, uh, may I request you to stay on mute? Till, okay. So your, your 10 lakh appreciated because now the company's valuation is 11 crores, not 10 crores. So it appreciated by 10%. Your 10 lakh became 11% just after the investment happened, the round completed. So that is the first gain which is a notional gain as of now, because you are not exiting right now. Now let us suppose second round happens at 20 crore valuation, generally which happens, and third round happens at 30 crore valuation. And at, in the third round, some investors who are buying the equity at a valuation of, say they also take 1%, and they have to pay 30 lakhs for 1% now. So that moment, existing investors, investors who have participated, can come and in the secondary, in the secondary, they can sell off their equity for say 20 lakhs. So incoming investor got 10 lakh rupees benefit. You got 10, 10 lakh rupees benefit. It is a win-win for both. And it does not mean that you have to sell it off for 20 lakhs. You can sell off for 25 lakhs also. They Both the parties should be agreed, right? And there has to be some discount at the current valuation offered by the company. That is why they will be attracted to buy from an existing investor. Kumardit, is that, is that uh, uh, Okay, clear? yeah. Answer? So uh, 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 that means there is a option provided to the uh, investors, to the previous investors, and then they, they can go for a assumed uh, valuation or a price, and th there should be a negotiation happening. It's like right. that. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so thank you. There are, there are uh, you know, two, two methods here also. Sometimes the company offers a buyback themselves, right? Before going for the next round, they offer a buyback. And okay. they will be, like we did two exits. Uh, one exit was for experiential ETC, six months. Company offered buyback before the next round. Similarly, talent gum, 
in just two months, company offered the buyback to the existing investors and investors made 50%. But that does not mean that all the investments will fetch 50%. This is just uh, maybe by, by chance that it has happened, but we are expecting it could be more, it could be less. Generally, we, we uh, suggest to the founders that if you have to buy back, at least buy back at 50% so that it, the deal becomes so much attractive for the existing investors. And I'll tell you why it happens. Initially, when the company is new, they will have many investors of small ticket and they have a limitation of, by law, they have a limitation of 200 total investors or shareholders, 200. Okay. So the company is private limited, unlisted. Then in case they have to receive bigger ticket funding and the existing investors are not interested in putting in more, they need to give exit to the existing shareholders so that they can take funds from the bigger ticket investors who are coming at a higher valuation. So nobody can be stuck. If the company is growing, they have to constantly raise funds and they have to give exit to the existing investors. By giving them exit, they can have a clear cap table. On the capitalization table, few names should depict, not more, because they need to accommodate incoming investors, more new investors want to come. You okay. have a follow-up question? Yeah, I, I have one more question. Sure. Uh, not related to this. This is regarding a, a different topic where uh, historically we have seen in the startup land, you, you have your own valuation method and there are some more valuation methods which are followed. Mm -hmm. So if any company is in idea stage, mostly the valuation comes around 3 CR to 2.5 CR to 3 CR. There is a range generally means I'm, I'm not uh, uh, going for some exceptional case, but whereas there is a, a order book, or uh, something has been uh, confirmed already by the company, the valuation goes for uh, two to three times uh, in general. So how do you calculate this order valuation against this company valuation? Miss, is there a ratio or something that if there is an order book of suppose one CR or two CR, then the valuation will uh, go by this, uh, this much? Is there any such calculation? Yeah, there are various methods, but the most prominent way you know, which is globally acclaimed and the simplest for all the investors is called EV is to valuation ratio. EV means enterprise value. So every company, if it is doing say one crore revenue, like I'll quote you example of Burger Singh. Burger Singh was doing 85 crores of revenue, 84 something. And it was raising at a valuation of 150 crores which was coming out to be less than 2x, right? Now, this became very, very attractive for the investors if they immediately put in funds. And I'll tell you why it happened. It happened because their existing investors were not ready to put in funds at a higher valuation. So they, were, they had no option but to raise at the same valuation for everybody. You cannot have two valuations. Right. So there is there is a revenue is to valuation multiple, which works very well globally. And it's a very simplified way of doing things. Uh, deep dive, when we do go, we definitely have our own method called fair share method of valuation. For idea stage, we consider a valuation method called David Burkus or Dave Burkus method, which is again a simplest form. You can Google it and you will also find out how it works. It gives weights. Uh, as per different different aspects of a startup, say idea itself, then the team, then the market size, then uh, if the revenue is there. So they have uh, different data points on which the valuation comes up. And definitely a high uh, you know, point is given when the valuation or uh, when the revenue is already there or the order book is big, right? We are also coming up with few startups wherein startup lanes is coming as a partner when we are taking up around 34 percent of equity those companies might be valued higher because they are already doing you know the existing founders are doing 24 25 crores 12 crores 14 crores of revenue and the same business is extended with startup lanes as a new company right so there you might experience higher valuation because two brands getting together and starting something not from scratch, we are starting from experience. 
So Startup Lanes is coming with uh, three such companies in partnership, wherein we are taking 34% and two other co-founders are there who are also coming from experience and they are already clocking good revenue in crores. So those startups, you will experience that the valuation might be 10 crores or 12 crores, something like that. Okay, Kumardi, follow up. Okay, sure. Yeah, uh, thank you. Thanks for the detailed explanation. It is helpful. Most welcome. Okay, Ritesh. Hi, Shushir. Hi, good morning. Thank you for arranging this session. A uh, couple of questions. Uh, so the first question that I have, so I have invested in uh, four startups so far. The latest one being uh, uh, Glamio Health. So what I want to understand, so when we invest, so normally we get uh, a different type of shares like CCPS. Uh, sometimes we see safe SAFE. So I need, if you can just help me uh, gain some clarity or, or guide where I can read about it, though I've tried internet, but couldn't get much clarity on this. So a little help would be very, very appreciated. Okay. That's the first question, but I have a couple of more for you if you allow me. Okay, but first let's let me, understand yeah. this first. Well, let's take one by one. So CCPS is normal preference share. There are, you know, there's a normal equity share and a preference share. The preference share means you have preferences in the next round of funding. Okay. And there are certain other preferences as well. So that is the difference between normal equity and a preference share. Okay. It has higher precedence in terms of rights. Now, CCPS is, is kind of a preference share, but restrictive rights. And generally, it is required by the startup structure because if, uh, you know, there are 100 investors and if startup has to go to each investor and take their permission for doing things, it becomes very, very difficult. So, restricted rights are there. Obviously, some critical decisions have to be taken by by the investors like I'll, I'll give you an example so startup lanes we ourselves are going for next round of funding now we uh, today evening we have invited all the existing investors to seek their permissions right so we if they allow we'll be having a discussion and uh, actually what we did is we instead of issuing ccps we issued equity i'm talking about startup lanes, but generally uh, all the founders, they prefer to go for CCPS. No other difference. Obviously, it's a preference here, so higher precedence is there. And uh, you talked about SAFE. SAFE means simple agreement for future equity. Now, you're not getting the equity right now. It is like a debenture. Obviously, not just like a debenture. It is a debenture agreement, right? Wherein you get a convertible debenture. Right now, the company is promising you to allot you equity at a future valuation. Generally, SAFE is done when the valuation is not defined. Suppose you say, no, I want to give you valuation of 3 crores. Founder say, I want 10 crores. So what they can do is, they say, okay, let's do this arrangement. We'll give you 50% or 25% discount in the next round of funding. And whatever valuation comes, we'll allot you at a 25% less. So that becomes SAFE wherein you are not getting the equity right now, but to secure, there has to be some collateral, some equity, uh, uh, some asset class issued to you. So that asset class is convertible debenture. That is issued to you and it gets converted into equity after a specified period of time. And the terms and conditions are noted. It has a floor and ceiling. That means below this valuation, it will not be allotted and beyond this valuation it will not be allotted yeah your next question and I'm, I'm sure you know if you have anything related to this you can ask no questions on this one so so because i've read it now that i have heard from you it brings clarity thank you second question i have is uh, so basically uh, when we invest uh, through a channel for example startup lanes uh, so I want to understand, do we have a carry charges uh, that is levied? So normally, because I, in my four startups, in one of them, for example, Glamio, I'm giving a certain percentage uh, through angel investing. So so when we invest through startup lanes, is there a carry that we'll have to pay? No carry, no cut, no commission. Right? People, not even commission. Nothing. Nothing from investors, not even membership fee. Initially, when we started, we were charging 1.25 lakh membership fee from the angel investors, but we have waived mm -hmm. off that also. 
right? So nothing is nothing has to be paid by the angel investors. We don't put in a carry. Uh, I will mm -hmm. tell you how these two ways of investing happens. One is direct, like Startup Lens does. Your money is directly going to the founder without, uh, you know, being filtered or cut commission. Nothing is there. Directly, your amount is going to the founder's company, that is the private limited company. Second, you have a direct relationship. Your name will be in the cap table of that company, right? But if you invest through fund, it will be masked. Third, indirect is that you will be directly having the voting rights. They will be reporting to you. All your permissions will be seeked. And the other structure is like a mutual fund, wherein a fund manager manages everything on your behalf. So they will take all your rights to the fund manager, right? Technically, it's not called fund manager. I'm just trying to you know, make it simple. So that fund manager will take all your rights, will manage on your behalf. If they want to exit, the entire fund will exit in one go. Your, you cannot say no, just like a mutual fund. You cannot say no, I don't want to exit. So entry, exit, all the decisions, voting will be taken by the fund. That is called an angel fund. And that is regulated by SEBI. Uh, you another another point is you have to minimum commit 25 lakhs to the fund, which is not there in startup lanes, right? This is a rule of SEBI. If you don't invest 25 lakh in that fund, then you can face penalties, fund can face penalties. A lot of issues could come up. And finally, your equity will be held by the fund. Your name will not depict in the cap table. And while they sell off the equity, they will charge a carry. While you invest into the fund, they will charge some, just like mutual fund has an entry and exit load. So they charge because this is how they run themselves. Startup lanes, we have got a lot of, lot of such suggestions to create a fund, but startup lanes has not created a fund. I'll tell you why fund is better because you have heard the bad points, but there are some good points also for the fund. Fund is better because in the cap table, only one name appears. So it technically solves the problem of the startup to go beyond 200 investors. Fund can mask those investors in one. And then a startup can take good amount of funding, huge amount of funding from different, different funds. But generally taking angel investors directly, that problem comes up. But again, one more big benefit is there. Okay. In, in uh, the biggest benefit that a startup receives if the investor is directly investing is that investor brings in a lot of value advisory connections sales references to the startup which is otherwise not possible through a fund because you don't have a direct relationship no interaction with the founders are possible because fund manages everything on your behalf right for people who are too busy to do things fund is a better option Right. For, but for people who want to actively be involved, who want to learn, who want to control, because startup investing gives you immense learning, immense. You can learn from their experiences while they report. And obviously your control is more. So if you want more control, your money to go directly, no deduction, you can invest through startup lanes. If you don't want that, then you can invest through other options. We, we also have fund options available, but we utilize angel list for that. Because Angel List is a global accepted brand. It is the largest fund uh, for angels. And obviously, uh, investors are very comfortable because of their structure. They do everything, due diligence, everything is there. So we do have investing through Angel List Fund. Uh, one startup is coming to us where, wherein we'll be having 3 lakh ticket size. The startup is doing really well. And uh, by the way, let me also inform you that uh, technically, we are trying to get more such startups with 50 crore, 60 crore, 100 crore revenues to give stability to the startup and obviously better opportunity to grow to our angel investors. Next question, please, Ritesh. Thank you, Sushir. Thank you for the detailed explanation. Yes. So the, my latest investment in Glamio was through Angel List. So that's where I learned about AIF fund, the one that you spoke about. Previous three have been through uh, CapTable. 
so thank you for the clarity and i'm looking forward to few deals through startup lanes because uh, for for rest of my three deals i have paid 2% of um, 2% of uh, transaction charges uh, so you're saying you don't have anything so that yeah, no charges you know? and uh, startups are fairly more stable and our valuations just like i told you burger singh we've got very good valuation 85 crore revenue 150 crore valuation uh, zap fresh we have got 72 crore revenue 150 crore valuation right so these kind of uh, we we do the due diligence we filter out and we also check our valuations if they does not match we gracefully decline the startup we don't take them and there's no cut commission. We also do angel list, but our carry will be very, very minimal uh, because we don't charge a carry. So only carry will be going to the angel list, which is like 5%, which angel list charge minimum. So we will not be taking any carry. Our objective is not to you know put carry on the investors. Our objective is to make sure that both the parties win. Yeah. And the last question, though I have many, but I'll restrict this one to be my last. So oh. while in investing, we always say founders first. So as an investor, uh, when a deal comes, we look at many things. Of course, the one formula that you said, look at the monthly revenue and then multiply by 12, divide by uh, the valuation they are putting in. And then we do a lot of research. How do we do a, a due diligence on the uh, founders, mm -hmm. which is the most important lever in, in a startup? That's the last question I have. See, uh, due diligence on the founder, there, there could be five basic points. One is criminal due diligence. If you want to check if the founder has committed any crime or not, you know, that is a police record. Uh, that the easiest way is to ask the founder to get a police verification done, mm -hmm. go to the nearest police station, fill up a form, just like, you know, you do for rental purpose. Mm -hmm. So get a, get it police with pay the fees, some 100, 150 rupees fees is there, or maybe 200, I don't know. Uh, they will themselves get this police verification done. Second due diligence is also very much important to check whether any civil cases are pending, right? Because if criminal is not there, good, yeah. but if civil cases are of nature of financial, right? Uh, technically, we have our contract. In that mandate, it is clearly mentioned, we don't take such founders who have civil cases related to financial transactions like we don't take them or any criminal case pending we don't take them that's why uh, so you can check those things then you have to check the credibility which is very much important you can yourself do a google check and find out about the founder you know there are some certain fake reviews fake things also if the founder is very much popular you will find out people the out of jealousy doing this right it has happened with me also my competitors have written some bad things they you know uh, a review on my book says founder has no knowledge sorry uh, the author has no knowledge about startups and on the other side i am ranked fourth in the world for startups and venture capital consulting in the world Brand and awarded by Clarity.fm, which is a part of Startup.co, largest platform in the world for startups. Again, so it could be anything. You have to rely upon your hurt as well, you know, your gut feeling, because might be internet speaks lot of uh, lot of lies, and then you can find out the activity. Uh, what I feel, I'm just telling you my my philosophy. If the founder is not active at social media. Right. It is not possible that there will not be any complaints about when you are running a business, there will be complaints. People will be chasing you somewhere or other. You know, they might be having like I'll, I'll give you an example of uh, uh, Harit Nagpal, uh, MD of Tata Play. I've seen him replying all those all those complaints which which he receives in the open public forum at LinkedIn and he replies on time. So if the founder is too much concerned about it, it shows the dedication and the passion. And that's very much important. If somebody says we have zero complaints, uh, that seems to be like fishy sometimes, right? So we need to find out because natural business, you cannot have 100% satisfaction. We all are humans. So how do you handle the dissatisfaction? That also matters. And in that due diligence, we also check through some other connections in our own network through other angel investors or other angel networks like i'll tell you what we do uh, and others also do if our startup goes to mumbai angels they just pick up the phone and call us 
Shishir, what, what is your feedback? How do you feel? Do you vouch for this particular startup? And we do the same. If our, uh, you know, we are taking a startup which has been a part of any other angel network or any other prominent investor, we always consider asking them whether, you know, the feedback is good whether they, they can vouch for that particular startup. So this basic due diligence you can, can do, but there is another aspect of it, which is which you cannot do. You know, you cannot find out what will be the, uh, you know, outcome after the funding. How I have seen a lot of founders change after receiving funds. You know, they became arrogant. They initially, they were like very much, not just with investors, with everybody, with their staff, with with the people people sometimes they you know call us or they call me you are my guru you are you are my mentor and all that after receiving funds they change this is again a human nature this due diligence nobody can do and we have to rely upon our gut feeling for that but that is also very much important how the person behaves in the public that is also very much important what kind of and what I do is I go to their social media and find out what kind of activities they have been doing, what is their likes, you know, what is their dislikes, what kind of talks they are doing. Say if you go to my LinkedIn, you will find out a lot of, you know, social support uh, initiatives I have taken. Uh, wherever there is anything related to India, I always, you know, uh, poke my nose there, talk about it, defend our country on international platforms. So it shows what kind of mindset you have. All right. You have a follow-up question? Uh, None, Shishir. Thank we... you so much for all the conversation. Yeah, great. Thank, Thank you. So, so, so this yeah. is Arun here. Can we? Can I ask a question? Surely. Why not? Uh, this is really a very informative question. I'd like to thank you for holding this session. Uh, I I have set up some small company earlier. But I'm looking at, looking forward to set up a good startup now with one of my uh, partners. So that question we'll take in uh, another Ask Me Anything. This is only no, no, I, my is. only point, is, if I can just finish within a minute. My, I'm trying to uh, get a good template for a project report. Any advice where I can get a good template? Because I want to start in a big, good way. So is there any advice where I can get a good template for a project report? I looked at the internet, but those are not very... You uh, will not you will not get any template and don't do template base. Take the services of startup planes. We do pitch deck, valuation, projection, project reports, everything. That sure. will be you need a professional for it because if you go for template, it will not be appropriately done. Generally, uh, what I've seen is pitch decks or anything which designers make, they don't have the idea, they just edit the templates, and you cannot have just one key for all the locks. That's what I want to say. Right. Sure. Every lock is different. All right. Okay. So who are you? Yeah. Hi. Yeah. Hi. Uh, yeah. Hi. This is Sanjay Gert. In fact, okay. uh, we have invested in a couple of companies. Mm -hmm. One was in the cloud kitchen, and uh, there was another in a financial company. So I have a, a couple of queries. The one is uh, that uh, when we are just going for some kind of a shareholding, is it going to be a diluted? It means that we non-diluted shareholding or a diluted shareholding because as they go for a further uh, investment and all those things, and the further shares has already been created. So uh, how it all work it out and uh, how should we go for it? Yeah, it will be diluting, right? Non-dilutive is only for certain cases wherein uh, some big anchor is coming. Say you get a celebrity, maybe a movie star, right? Coming and joining you. Uh, then they might ask for 1% non-dilutive. You know? That means every time you do a round, you have to issue additional shares to them yeah. at a particular X valuation, which is already agreed. <laughs> right. So dilute, generally, everybody's share dilutes, including the founders, investors in the next round of funding in terms of percentage, but okay. not in terms of numbers. Your number of shares will always be fixed. Percentage will be diluted that means your voting rights will be affected but not your ownership not your uh, uh, valuation of the shares that will not be affected only the voting rights will be definitely affected and the percentage of uh, the equity in the company yeah that will also be diluted. Any okay so 
And uh, secondly is that, that we, if we are going, because till now we have not gone through a startup lens, to be honest. And uh, we really want to uh, maybe invest in a few more companies now. So if we are going through a startup lens, uh, is there any kind of a surety in terms of or a guarantee in terms of uh, the returns uh, which we get it to startup lens? Uh, yes, actually, uh, you know, we have created, I will not call it guarantee, but I will, you know, I would like to term it as an assurance. So we generally have this contract with the founders to buy back the equity within maximum three years. Right. With some, we have two years agreement, with some, we have three and with some, we have four years agreement to buy back the equity at least at 25 percent appreciation. And this happens with personal guarantee. That means even if the company gets shut down, founders will sell off their assets, personal assets, car, house, whatever, mm -hmm. and have to buy back this equity. This is very strict agreement that we do with the founders. This might uh, appear to be very mean. But it is not because generally if the founders are very much confident about their startups, they never ever fear out on these things. They sign up such contracts and at least uh, see 25% in three years is not yes. the amount for which a founder will, of, uh, at which an investor will invest. So obviously, you know, this, this is just a protection of the capital, which we try to in case the company also shut down, the founders become bankrupt, then only your capital will be lost. In normal cases, we try to protect the capital and that is the reason out of 123 fundings we have done, no company has been shut down. Not yet. Okay. That's, great. That's great. Thank you. Pleasure. Anand, can we take your question? Yeah, hi. Uh, actually, um... Uh, some of my friends also wants to invest, but uh, you know they have they are Indian before, but now they have uh, given up the citizenship. Like, say, a few of my friends are in Australia who wants to invest via startup lens. So, is it possible for them because they are Definitely. now an Australian citizen? Definitely. So, for the investor, it is no issue. Only okay. for the startup, they have to enter into RBI compliance. Is that? Sorry, so do they have to open any special account for that? Nothing, nothing has to be done by the investor. Only okay. it is the compliance from the company receiver's end. Investors okay, okay, don't okay. have to do any kind of compliances, nothing to be done. They All can right. definitely invest directly. Okay, okay. Thank you, Shashi. That's the only question I have. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. Can we take Ashish? Hi, good morning, Mr. Shishi. This is Ashish. Uh, I have a very basic question as this session is for beginners. Uh, I would like to know how it's actually work and in how many way our money goes. I mean, uh, you mentioned there is an angel list. Actually, I'm very fresher. I don't have any idea about angel investing. I come to know about you from LinkedIn. Uh, last time I tried to join during Zab, but unfortunately I was uh, not able to manage my time. So okay. I would like to know the basic actually how it's work. And okay. as uh, the previous question was the assurance, you said it's 25%. Uh, now I also do the trading. In trading, I do good trading. Uh, like in one year, my portfolio become now in 80. Now even the market is down, I will get like 85%. It's like that mm. uh, in plus. So mm. I just want to know how it's work. And if uh, in there is a loss in the company in the startup then do we have to pay back or something like that same or we have to book the loss anything like that okay see i'll i'll tell you the zapfresh example itself okay <clears throat> so uh, as per the zapfresh there is 150 crore worth of they are into fresh meat delivery through an app as per them every city every metro has minimum potential of 150 crores of this you know for each company they have done their research now they are doing 72 crores from one city delhi ncr now they want to start in hyderabad and mumbai now for starting in hyderabad and mumbai they will be needing some funds for awareness of their product because it is an app right and they tie up with suppliers so they don't have to spend there only awareness is required. 
So for that awareness, initially you have to do a lot of marketing, maybe 5 crore, 10 crore, 20 crore marketing. So they require funding for doing that marketing, awareness, brand promotion, acquiring the customers through digital marketing. And thereafter, it will be smooth work for them. So for that, Zapfresh kind of startups, they approach us. We reach out to the investors, investors put in their funds. Now, once you put in funds, it is just like the stock market, wherein you invest at a low price and you sell off at a higher price. Right. We don't have reverse contracts or something. Futures and derivatives are not available. Futures option, no concept. It is normal, just like equity investing. You buy shares, wait for some time till the end. The difference among stock market and angel investing is by the time a company reaches the stock market, it is already inflated pricing. Huge valuations come up. You know, the EV is to uh, uh, market price of that particular security will be 21, 25 times, right? But in generally, when you invest into startups, you get two, three times, just like in Zapfresh, 72 crore revenue and uh, valuation is 150 crore. So you are tapping it at uh, 2x, right? But you must have seen, you know, uh, in Red Herring Prospectus, you see dot, dot, uh, raising this much amount at this particular dot, which is X times of their price or value book value right so generally at the stock market time it becomes really really expensive but they reduce the price of the shares by issuing more number of shares so to retail investors it appears that the share price is 100 rupees and in angel investing the share price is 10000 so angel investors who are smart they understand but retail investors who are investing for first time they don't understand they think uh, 10 rupees price or 100 rupees will be cheap right so it's it is the underlying value which makes mm -hmm. it cheap or expensive so generally when you invest into a startup you wait for some time just like stock market in the next round of funding you get an opportunity to exit at a higher valuation because it is it is all more like a if you buy a plot right people will come to you and may say that they also want to buy from you at a lower price you will say i will not sell so your price control is under your control for your plot. You will not sell off at a lower price. And that is why the valuations of startups generally don't go down. Right? Most of the time, out of 1000 times, 999 times, the valuation will never go down because that is controlled by the founders. They will not accept any money at a lower valuation. Even government creates a lot of issues why you have accepted money at a lower valuation. So valuation will definitely go up. Unlike stock market, where the market is fluctuating. Now, your question was, what if the if the company gets into losses, will you yeah. have to bear loss? No, you don't have to bear loss. Your loss is limited to the capital that you have invested. And for that capital protection also, we have the agreement with the founders. So technically, you are not losing out anything, but it will be wrong to say that risk is not there. Risk is always yeah. there. Yeah, right? exactly. yeah. Uh, I have two more questions, if you allow me. Sure. Uh, the investment is for limited period of time or it will be for long term and another is what will be the minimum ticket size that's all minimum ticket size for idea stage startups that means pre-revenue startups is 50,000 for startups doing revenue is 1 lakh but for startups which are already uh, doing good revenue 50 crore 100 crore kind of and they have raised funds then the ticket size has to be 5 lakh 10 lakh 20 lakhs because uh, there is a number of limit of investors. So we have to accordingly adjust. If we have to raise, say, 7 crores or 5 crores, and then we cannot keep 1 lakh rupees as ticket size. So it will be 15 lakh, 20 lakhs, 25 lakhs that particular time. And another question was, the uh, the investment will be for a limited period or it will be for long term? So uh, investment, you, you should keep for long term, say three to five years, but definitely you'll get opportunities to exit, right? And if you keep it for uh, five years, the global numbers say that you are going to get 16x of your capital invested. One crore invested will return 16 crores in five years span. Another global number says, statistic says, nobody has ever lost capital if they have invested into five or more startups. So minimum five investments if you do. Again, these are all, you know, statistics. It's not guarantee. So generally the statistics say nobody has ever lost. Uh, and 
uh, through startup lanes, if you are investing into the revenue based startups, which we bring in, uh, what I feel is there is no startup will be shutting down because after doing 50, 60 crore of revenue, we don't go for startups which are doing burn. Let me also tell you. If a startup is burning money too much, we don't select them. We try to get only the startups which are raising funds for scaling up their operations. Right? Like Burger Singh, we invested. Burger Singh is opening uh, one uh, new outlet every seven days. Right. So if they keep on opening these outlets, obviously their business will grow. Yes, right. Right. So we don't we don't uh, get into startups which are taking money for burning. Just you know, like downloads. We don't invest into startups a uh, pre revenue which is just increasing the downloads. We don't do that. If any startup is saying you know I'm buying for more and selling for less, we don't do that. We don't uh, fund the, such kind of price disruption if it is through the investors money so we try to make sure only the money should go for marketing purpose or for customer acquisition and in internally we have made this a formula if 85 percent of the investor fund is not going for minimum 85 percent is not going for customer acquisition reject the startup okay Hello? okay thank you mr Shishi. nice to talk Pleasure. to you yeah Thank you. Yeah. Can we take the question of Shiraz? Hi, Shashir. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, just, uh, just wanted to confirm, like, for example, if I invest in any startup, uh, which is in the revenue stage, so uh, how's the exit going to be before uh, the rounding? For example, first round uh, happens. And what about the next round before if I want to exit, say, in a year or so? Then yeah, the next so you... round is planned in a 18 months or so. So how is the you... valuation going to be? And yeah. how the so... exit is going to be? I'll tell you. See, uh, the public valuation is only established when there is a next round of funding and the investors invest on that particular valuation. So that is the public valuation. In case you invested at a, uh, at a valuation of say 10 crores, you invested 5 lakh in a company and 6 months have passed and the revenues grew say at the time when you invested the revenue was 25 lakhs per month and now it is 50 lakhs. So what you can at least calculate from your side to convince other investors is that the revenue has doubled up. So at least you can expect this 5 lakhs, uh, you know, uh, equity must have become 10 lakhs, but I'm giving you for eight and a half or eight lakhs, then the deal could be successfully done. What you can do is you can pass on this share to any other investor who's interested, right? We do have our communities. So in such kind of deals, we charge a nominal 2% fee. You just have to let us know. We will circulate with all those investors and whomsoever is interested who might have missed the round that particular time will be happy to you know, buy from you. And both of you can negotiate. We just charge 2% for this particular transaction. Thank you, Shishi. Pleasure. Can we take Yash? Yash Goyal? Hi, Shishan. Hi. Yeah, I follow you on LinkedIn very religiously and seriously, your dream of creating 1 million jobs is awesome. Thank you. So kind of you, sir. Yeah. So there is one question from my side. Uh, is there any minimum lock-in period for the funds which we are going to invest in the startup? Generally, it's not there. We have, as per our mandate, we don't lock in the investors. But in certain scenarios, when... Uh, a startup is coming to us with pre-existing conditions, you know, because their existing investors might have done like that, that you have to lock in the investors who are coming in. So it might be uh, one year to one, 1.5 years generally. But again, nobody knows in certain cases, it could go up to two, three years as well. But okay. generally for our startup, we never, if there is no pre-existing condition, we don't have such kind of condition. Okay, understood. Uh, one more follow-up question. So, in between, if there is any opportunity to get our funds back, so could you please explain me about those opportunities or how can we get those uh, get those back? So, one opportunity is the buyback offered by the company itself, right? Okay. So, like I, I recently told about in the same meeting, two exits happened. One in two months, fifty percent profit. That is experiential. Uh, I'm sorry, that is uh, talent gum. And another happened in six months, experiential ETC. So investors got the opportunity to sell back the equity. They have received the funds in back to their bank account. 
at 50 percent appreciation in six months and two months respectively so this this opportunity is available uh, in case you want to sell off your equity uh, before the next round of funding you let us know what we'll do is we'll circulate among all the investors and like i said we'll just charge two percent of the deal amount oh very nice yeah okay. that's it Shushar. thank you so much pleasure Gancham, sir you have a question you have to unmute, sir. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Thank you, sir, for joining in. Yes. So, I have one question. See, we have invested in a study at home. Yeah. Um, I think in the month of January. Recently, we got a message that, again, they are asking the amount. Hmm. So, their valuation is now, they say that uh, per share is 22,500 rupees. Hmm. But when I told them that, uh, why didn't you come through this uh, startup plane? They said that uh, we are uh, raising on their own. Yeah, so because we are not accepting that valuation. Uh, yeah, because I told that uh, how you got this valuation. They said that uh, they got it through their chartered opponent. Mm. Uh, so then I kept quiet. Whether to invest or not, I don't know. So no, actually, uh, we are not doing their second round because we are not accepting their valuation. Huh. And uh, we have advised them not to go for phenomenal valuation, but huh. they are not accepting. So we have not taken them for second round of funding. Okay. right? So uh, better, I will not recommend to invest at this particular high valuation again. Yes. Yes. Better to wait for some time and let other investors from their own network come in. Yeah, because some other companies are also there. One more doubt I have about the cloud kitchen. So what I've seen ki there are uh, Income, it comes through what they say that their lease charges is rupees seven rupees per square feet, and they are charging to their customers for two hundred and ten rupees like that. So one hundred and forty rupees is a difference, and out of one hundred and forty, maybe some fifty percent is the expenditure. Then seventy rupees, whatever they are getting that uh, income, so it is not sufficient. Though we, through this, like this, uh, the company may not grow faster. So though they open several uh, different cloud kitchens in different cities, even tomorrow some similar things, other people they may start. Even the land owner also, he may also start his own I'll, cloud I'll, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you this answer. Yes. So it's actually, sir, not the cloud kitchen. It is cloud kitchen space or rental. Okay. Hmm. So they make 300 square feet the segregated kitchens in one place. Right. Now, the entire is common setup is there. You have to get one gas connection, which could be distributed the same pipeline. Everything is common. So this way they are able to save a lot of cost. Second, for vendors, it is easy to go there and supply. So the pricing comes down. It's just like a cloud kitchen, you know, business center, same a common place where everybody is sitting and they are charging the rental. They have the sharing with the, uh, you know, landowners. So they can never be in losses because they have a profit sharing with the landowner. They are not paying fixed rental. But will this company will uh, grow fast? Uh, uh, yes, yes, yes. Because uh, what happens is they have subscription income B2B from the companies which are growing fast, like Swiggy Zomato yes. or you know these kind of companies, uh, uh, Wow Momo. They are growing rapidly. So. Obviously, a new uh, entrants are coming. Like we have signed up another deal. The startup is from Delhi. They, are, they have nine outlets. They are doing 50 crore revenue, five zero, just from nine outlets. And they will be utilizing these cloud kitchens for their expansion purpose. I have suggested them, right? When a startup comes through our platform, it becomes like a you know connected family. So I recommend them to use each other's services. So this startup can, and they are into vegetarian, pure vegetarian uh, restaurant food. So th when they scale up, they can utilize these cloud kitchen rentals and scale up faster. Because opening up uh, your own kitchen in each city, it will take a lot of time. But if you go for a cloud kitchen on rental, it will be fast. So it's a mix wherein the startup can uh, keep the quality control because it's your own kitchen, right? Uh, and it is a cloud kitchen, so you don't invest into infrastructure. Okay. Yeah, that's all. Right. And if you want, I'll 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 put you in contact with Lakshya, who's the founder of 
cloud uh, kitchen center so you can you know have a better understanding directly from him okay okay yes please thank you thank you sir thank you can can we take saiju's question Hello. Yeah. Good evening, Shishir. Um, as I have also been following you, but uh, due to my busy schedule, not always. Uh, uh, just as we discussed uh, a while ago, you said you take due diligence uh, regarding the firm, and you take up only those cases uh, which you are well satisfied. Right. Hello. Yeah. Yes. So. just in case like you are okay satisfied with uh, whatever they are promising but after funding if they are not keeping up to their promises or things go wrong or not as per their expectations and you see that the money is i mean um, more money is getting burned and the expected uh, profit or whatever is not uh, coming in so what is your role do you take in a responsibility um, to save the investors uh, money or like uh, it's uh, just up to their luck yeah i'll explain you few clauses of our mandate you know yeah. in our contract what we have uh, bound them is in case of uh, company falling down if the profitability mm -hmm. is falling if the revenue is falling it is well defined you know so i'm just giving you overview in case the company is falling down they have to inform startup lanes and the investor and a committee will be formed immediately mm -hmm. and that committee will be chaired by a nominee from those investors and then that person will closely coordinate and give the decisions for the startup right so investors this is the contract we have investors will decide in that case if the company is falling down because the founders are not able to control right so it together everybody will you will you know try to row the boat in case if uh, you know it works it will work and else it's beyond the control everybody will make the losses but at least we will be satisfied that we tried our best another thing is we have uh, put that into the contract that we will have our independent director right so we are not actually appointing an independent director right now but whenever we feel it is required for investigating the accounts for you know day to day checking we can appoint an independent director third we have also put in uh, the mediation uh, in in the contract in case of any dispute we can call upon a retired justice and do the mediation because there could be dispute obviously so instead of going to the court we can have just the mediation uh then uh, through arbitration obviously and then one more clause is there which says like i told you protection of the capital of the investors in case the company shut downs or you are not able to provide exit to the investors in 3 years then you have to buy back this equity through the company if the company does not have funds you have to sell off your assets and buy the uh, you know equity of the investor so this way investors are being protected like i said earlier in case the company shut downs the founders are bankrupt then your money is gone then nobody can do anything but we have tried our level best to protect the capital but not every founder signs up this contract uh, they might get this modified because if they already have some existing investors like burger singh they were having existing investor like sanjeev veek chandani which who will never be you know negotiating on any terms so there we did not had this kind of contract we have a normal contract but generally for startups where we are choosy we command our terms to protect the interest of the investors but in this case like uh, if i am going for investment uh, will i be able to know if uh, you have signed any such contracts and in the term sheet safe? yeah in the term sheet it will itself it will be written this buyback clause will be there rest like company falling down and all those things we this is a part of standard contract that we don't negotiate only we we can negotiate on the buyback portion you know because if the existing investors are not having buyback who invested large chunk of capital they will not allow incoming investors you know who are coming to do this so, only those clauses we negotiate we don't negotiate on these you know committee forming in independent director and all there should be 
but in certain cases it could happen if they have an existing contract with somebody wherein they say no independent director will come then we have to override this but it generally out of 100 cases 99 will be as per our standards and how about this cloud kitchen one cloud kitchen one we have the standard contract it is into our exclusive mandate the all the terms are already accepted except i think buyback term has some negotiation clause so that we can update you but it will be mentioned in the term sheet okay thank you sir pleasure okay can we take uh, rizul hi good morning good morning yeah good morning everyone good morning uh, i'm very new into the investing field i just finished my post graduation last year only and now i can invest only up to 4 lakh so can you please guide me on which company to start with and how to go ahead see uh, that should be your own decision uh, where to invest no you know you should this your money you should decide we can help you in understanding uh, the opportunity and if you go to startup lanes wealth website you'll find out uh, some opportunities which has been already shared the video of uh, those demo days are there you know we have recorded and in case you feel interested if you have 100 questions we'll be happy to answer all those 100 questions if you want to talk to the founders we'll be happy but ideally it should be your own decision right i do this way even i don't take anybody's advice whenever i have taken advice i have already you know i have always made losses or at least when 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 somebody tells you to put in money that is the wrong way to go about it right so uh, opportunities could be shown but you decide for yourself so uh, actually i'm planning to invest into test seven chicken yeah so you know you can evaluate that startup uh, obviously for us all the startups are good we evaluate we find out whether you know what will be the chances of appreciation the uh, taste heaven chicken they come from a family they are chartered accountants family when i say you know who have links in the same industry and uh, they have export order so we have seen all that uh, but obviously you know nobody knows which investment will be good which will be bad risk is always there because high risk equal to high profit that is the fundamental so uh, prima facie it appears to me very good but depending upon your appetite of risk you can decide upon then our investment banking team aditya will be helping you out in connecting or any question you have you know so our team is also uh, most of them are highly experienced chart accountant <laughs> okay thank you okay yeah so finally we still have uh, ashish you have a question yeah yeah shishir please go ahead so shishir i just have one question regarding a revenue based startup so for example uh, i have invested let's say 5 lakh rupees initially to start with so is there any platform uh, where i can see my revenue going up and how much percentage it has gone up so how it is like see actually uh, there is nothing like this right now but uh, definitely mm -hmm. as the industry grows not even in west as the industry grows these kind of data points see what what happens is we, right now we don't have these kind of apis but in the west these apis are coming up wherein you can attach directly to the bank after their permission so later what mm -hmm. we can do is we can directly attach to the bank of the founder to get their details and we can attach to the gst department to find out how much gst they are paying and what is the total amount coming into the bank this we can match and find out the growth actual one but right now we have to rely upon what uh, what chartered accountants tell us so obviously uh, every month the startup should they should you know give you a provisional profit and loss update uh, you know stamped by their chartered accountant or even if it is not stamped they should tell you as per the collection in the bank that you can verify so that we have kept for the last uh, last week of the month you know they can do it on saturday sunday as per the availability but we recommend all the startups to do at least once a month okay got it so shishir let's say my investment of 5 lakh becomes uh, 15 lakh in two years times mm -hmm. and i want to exit after two years 
So will that 15 lakh rupees will be refunded directly to my bank account and is that money taxable? Yeah, obviously it is taxable and it will come to your bank account right? as a long term yeah. capital gain, just like a normal share treatment will be done. Got it. So for the revenue based startup, if I wanted to uh, start investing, so I can visit your website and see what are the uh, startups that are uh, that come under revenue based startup. Yeah. So right? generally, we do uh, one. We are not. We don't do too many demo days, and we have exclusive mm -hmm. demo days. Our strategy okay. is different. so we do uh, maybe through two or three demo days in a month. Every Saturday, the same time, eleven o'clock, where we are doing this meetup. So mm -hmm. what we do is we have those startups coming up and we close the deals in maximum two weeks. So you may okay. not find out the older deals active, but that mm -hmm. will give you a fair idea. Got it. Got it. Shishu. Thank you so much. Yeah. Pleasure, Ashish. Uh, Sayed Inayatullah, you have a question? Uh, yes, sir. Sure. Hi. Hi. I, I just wanted to check uh, when there is a startup which is a free revenue stage or just at ideation stage. They might have the, you know, but they have not even gone to the market. So what is the kind of due diligence you will make there? Uh, in that case, if they, this is just an idea, you know, you can only do the due diligence of the founder, the idea, the market size, but nothing much is available in our hands. So it's, it's a kind of, you know, uh, higher risk, in comparison to a startup which is making revenue but obviously higher risk equals to higher uh, profits and that is why we ask all the founders uh, all the investors to just put in 50000 and only put that amount if you can afford to lose you know so if you invest into 10 such startups just 50 50000 even if one startup performs good it will cover up your entire 10 startups investment plus give you 2-3x profit. So maybe your 50,000 will become 15,000, 20, 000, sorry, 15 lakh maybe or 20 lakhs maybe if you stay, if only one startup has become, you know, unicorn or do, does very well in five, six years time because uh, we have the cases like 4.7 crore invested by Sanjeev B. Chandani in Foodie Bay, the Zomato, became 22,000 crore at the time of IPO listing. You know, so and there are certain failure stories as well. You know, people invested crores into companies, local banya uh, went off in the air. So both sides are there. And uh, generally, if you are putting into a company which is not burning much, your money is safe. And uh, in this case, idea stage startup, we check, you know, what is the background of the founder? So whether they will be able to excise the buyback. If they are just hand to mouth, then, you know, we try to avoid them to protect our investors. Okay. Right. So let's take the last question from Veer. Time is already up and then we can close this session. Yes, Veer. Yes. Uh, hi, Shishir. I have two questions. One is uh, that I am just starting out with uh, angel investing. I haven't done anything. And this has been, in fact, the first class I'm taking. Just wanted to know that what would be the first few steps you would recommend me to do to just get going? Is there someone I can meet in your company or uh, get on a call with to understand where and how to start off with it? Yeah, I'll tell you the first step is to go to Startup Lane's YouTube channel. There are playlists we have created. I have answered approximately 68 questions related to startups generally. And uh, two of these Ask Me Anything sessions for investors have been published. Once you gather that particular knowledge, because you'll, you'll get, you know, a lot of frequently asked questions, people whom, you know, the questions which are not coming to your mind, they have already asked. And then it will give you a fair idea. Yeah. And then at that will be the time, right time to have the right kind of discussion. My team members are expert, but not as expert as what I can, you know, advise you. So definitely... Mm -hmm. I will be available to answer your specific query related to any particular specific startup. You know, the time, first of all, uh, you should not invest right now, but you should evaluate, understand, learn, go and see all the demo days. In each demo day, you will find out a lot of questions asked by the investors, each demo day. And fortunately, we have kept all the recordings. So in case you are not able to find 
uh, a particular demo day at our website you can go to youtube channel the recordings will be available and there you will get a lot of so it's a hell lot of material more than thousand mm -hmm. videos we have already put in lot of startup ideas are there lot of things are available all you have to do is just spend some time and then if you are interested in investing in a particular startup or if you have any specific queries come to us i'll be happy to answer all right well uh, thank you for that that uh gives me clarity one more thing is that uh, i am aware of a co company that's looking to uh, pick up investing is that something also i can come and speak to you about or uh, so that uh, you know that is channelized through our regional directors so you can talk okay. to our team or check out our website if you want to be a regional director our sourcing happens through regional directors okay okay all right sure all right so that takes us to the end of this session. Thank you so much for joining in. It was also very much exciting for me to come up here. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye. See you next time.